Hi, today I want to show you my new project. It's an Xmas tree designed with KiCad and I draw a schematic and also I produce a PCB with a PCB manufacturer and I do the soldering and the testing. And today I want to show you all the necessary steps for this small project. One core component of this project is a 555 timer in a A-stable mode and working as an oscillator and so I do a simulation with LT spice give me all the calculation of the needed components. So I start the simulation by pressing the run button and I choose all the signals I want to display. I want the output so I can see there's every maybe about one second there's a half second pulse and I can show the charging line of the capacitors on the trigger input. I can play in my simulation with different values and I don't have to build my project in a breadboard or do a complicated calculation. So the next step is to draw the schematic. So I open KiCad and open my schematic. I've done it already. This is our 555 timer. I use the TS555. It's in CMOS, very low power chip. So that's special for better powered application and the next component is a CD 4017 decimal counter. So let's have a look at the data sheet of the CD 4070. It's a decimal counter or a decade counter with 10 decoded outputs. So we can have 10 LEDs driven by this chip and only one output line is on at all time. And we have also a clock line that's for our oscillator and the clock inhibit or enable pin and also a reset pin. And on pin 8 and pin 16 we have to tie up our power. On pin 8 goes the ground and on pin 16 our battery voltage. And as you see here, maybe we have a close up, all the output pins are in a weird order. It's just a point we have to consider in our PCB design. And the supply voltage range is from 3 volt up to 18 volt. But I figured out that we can use this chip also at maybe 2.5 volt and it works fine. And we only drive this by um, maybe 1 hertz so we can go up to megahertz. But I don't use it at megahertz. I only use it at 1 hertz. And here we have the schematics, the inside schematics and also the timing diagram. So we have to tie reset and clock inhibit to ground to switch all the, the clock pulses. And on every rising edge of our pulse, the clock switched from one stage to the next stage. So it starts by zero at high, then we get our one, two, three, four and so on. And after we reach nine we start by zero again and here we have a figure for the octal counter but I don't use it and as we see here it came in a dip package and also that's my usage I use a SMD version this is the SOP 16 dimensions this is the spacing of the leads it's 1.27 millimeters or 50 mils and here we see the footprint print of the package. And accidentally I use this chip on my this PCB design. So I have reorder my chips because I have already all my chips. So just a tip for beginners. Before you order your PCB just print it out on a piece of paper. You can compare the footprints with your actual chips. And for all 10 outputs I use an LED and only in this case there's only lit one LED at a time so I can only use one resistor to limit the current. If there's more than one LED at a time you need for every LED a resistor but this counter only power up one LED at a time so you only need one resistor. And after drawing the schematic I put in every component a footprint so this is an SOP16 footprint and here we have a SO8 footprint 
and all other components mostly are 0603 packages. So I use 603 packages for the LEDs and 603 packages for the resistors and also 603 packages for the capacitors. And for our battery I use a CR2032 battery holder. So after I draw all the circuit lines and put all the footprints in the schematic I also save the netlist or generate it and save it here and then we can draw the PCB. So I've done it already. I don't want to bore you with the details but um, we can show maybe the front copper lines and we can also see the background copper lines and I've done a ground fill zone so everything is filled with ground but I think the better view is we use the 3D view so we can see all our components in a 3D view and I switch the components on so we see what's on the board. Here we have our 555 timer and this is the CD4017, the decimal counter also in CMOS version and on the back side I've drawn the battery holder. So the only component on the back side is a battery holder and all other components goes on the front side. And we have three resistors and four capacitors and 10 LEDs all in the 603 package. And to bring the PCP to the manufacturer I've done a panelized version. So let's open up the panelized version. You can see here and switch all the couple copper lines on. But it's all a copy of the tree in one side here and this is the back side. So we can fit six of the trees in one 10 by 10 PCB. 10 by 10 um, centimeters or 100 by 100 millimeters. So, but let's do a 3D view of the panelized version. The only thing in KiCad, um, you can only have a panelized version of one PCB and all others are don't showed with the PCB. It's only the traces, but I don't know the reason. But it looks also nice. And if we want to see a little bit about the traces, I switch the components off and also the solder mask. So we only see the traces on our PCB. So we can do a inspection of all our traces and vias. But for me, it looks fine. So let's switch the solder mask on again also nice and also the components. Okay next step is to plot all the Gerber files and I do the foreground copper, the background copper, the silk screen for and background, the solder mask for and background. I do the edge cuts for all the milling because we want a nice looking tree with very sharp edges and I put also the margin out. And also I generate the drill files because we need all the holes. So then we can have a look at the Gerber files. I use Gerb V to open all the layers. And I rearrange the layer order. So first we have our milling and our dimensions and also the holes. Then we start with the silk screen of the top layer, then the solder mask of the top layer and also the copper lines of the top layer. And then the same for the back layer. I put the silk screen, then the solder mask and also the copper lines. So we can switch this off and inspect layer for layer. Maybe we only want to see the drilling holes or the dimension or the milling layer. And we can also see the silk screen or the solder mask holes and also our copper layers. And 
it's the same for the background but i think here we see on the okay. bench the that's ready-made nice. pcbs i ordered as i mentioned 10 by 10 centimeters pcbs and it came with a package of 10 or maybe sometimes you get 11 or 12 pcbs and for obvious reason this is a green solder mask so i ordered the green one but you can choose every color but for xmas 3 it's nice to be a green color and on the pcb there's also another project so you don't have to fit one project on one pcb but that's time for another video and you see there fits three of the trees on one side of pcb but the one in the middle is flipped so all the solder mask is also flipped with the design and just a small tip from my solder experience, my best tweezers I don't get at an electronics store or can order it online. I just go to the next drugstore and use a sharp tweezer from this company. This is a Zwilling tweezer from Solingen, Germany. So let's open up the package and get out the tweezers and as you see it have very sharp edges and you can easily grab the 0603 packages and also the SOP 16 packages or also the TSSOP 16 packages. So let's continue with the soldering. First I apply enough flux to all the PCB and then I start with the TSSOP 16 packages for the CD4070. And I start by aligning the chip on the PCB and then start to solder one pin at one corner of the chip and then I apply enough solder to all the other pins. And sometimes you bridge some pins but that's okay. You can fix this by pulling the soldering tip away from the pins because the solder tries to follow the heat and if that don't work you can use the soldering wick to wick all the excessive solder away. Next chip is the TS555, the timer chip in a SO8 package. And I start again by aligning the chip on the PCB and then solder one corner of the chip and then the opposite corner and drag all the solder around the pins. Then I continue with the LEDs. They are in 603 and that's only the size of the tip of my tweezers. And I use my testing tweezers to check if all the LEDs lit up and to check the polarity of the LED. Then I start to solder the LEDs by applying solder to one pad of the LED and just carefully heat the solder and then apply the LED with a tweezer. And if the LED fits on the pad, then we can solder the other side of the LED. And the same procedure with the next LED and so on, just one times around the clock with all 10 LEDs. And as you see, it's very fiddly job just to fit one LED, but you have to be patient and just relax and just do one LED at a time and just focus on your goal. You want to have your project ready and sometimes just check if your work is okay. So I do my check tweezers and check if the soldering is a good job for the LEDs and the LEDs lit up. And we don't have accidentally destroy the LED by heat. That's sometimes you have to mention. So we have a 500 pack of the LED or buy some maybe 1000 LEDs and you can throw some of the LEDs. You have to destroy it in the bin. 
And as you see, if I completed the right side of the LEDs, all five LEDs, I start with the left side and also continue all five LEDs and do sometimes a check if I do the polarity right and all LEDs lit up so we don't have accidentally destroy something or we have a fault on our board. And the last step is to solder all the resistors and all the capacitors. Just the same as the LEDs, but we don't have to check the polarity because all our resistors don't have a polarity and I only use SMD ceramic capacitors and they also don't have a polarity. And this is the result after cleaning all the flux away from the PCB and also solder the CR2032 battery holder on the back side. And we can dim the light so we see all the LEDs blinking on our Christmas tree gimmick. And we can see also the components I use. This is the green LED 0603 in 500 strips. And also this is the CD4070 in TSSOP package. And also the TS555 timer in the S08 package. And as mentioned, I order also the CD4070 in a SOP16 package, but I use this for an another project. And here we see an example for assortment of capacitors in a 805 package type or also a 0603 package. And just have a look at the result again. Also, we can see the back side with the, with the CR2032 battery holder and also a battery inserted into it. You can find all the schematics, the PCB layout and KiCad and also the LT Spy simulation files on my GitHub page. So just follow the link in the description down below. So that's all for today and I thank you for watching today and I hope you learned something and if so please give me a big thumb up and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye bye.